it's Paige Rosner. I'm a gallery educator here at the Southern Alberta Art Gallery, and welcome to Jennifer Harmon and Daniel Boren's The Collaborationist. My name is Jennifer Marmon. And my name is Daniel Borens. We've done our best to design an exhibition that specifically relates to the architecture uh, of SAG, uh, but also to transform that architecture and to create a surprising and innovative series of encounters for the viewer. There are instances of confrontation, confrontation with the viewer, and works opposed to each other, and works that reveal each other through tensions. And then subtexts can be brought in, subtexts of uh, the history of 20th century uh, modernity, uh, aspects of artistic production, and the references that these works make to previous movements, and then the updates that are necessary in order to make the work contemporary. The questions uh, that we're asking of that legacy of modernity uh, in the present day. We feel that's what uh, brings this exhibition into the present. A, a key piece in the show is black boxes. Black boxes is the first piece you encounter when you enter the gallery space. It's a server room. It features five large black boxes. All of them have red LEDs on the top corner. There's a strange humming sound in the room. Um, and so what we've done is we've given the viewer the idea of these, these servers, the idea of data, and it's playing off of our current digital age. Behind us is real to real. Um, the, the physical uh, notion of data uh, and black boxes, the virtual notion of data. So in that sense, um, we have this remarkable uh, shift from uh, a physical world in which we used to be able uh, to touch and quantify uh, to a virtual world uh, in which we can't contextualize uh, information anymore, in which it goes beyond uh, the realm of our understanding. We're setting up um, that binary instance uh, in the first encounter in the space, and we're making that play off of the next series of works um, in the second room and the third room in the gallery space. Um, I have a special relationship with input-output. Um, input-output is a highly technical piece which hides all of the um, technical inside a very minimalist black box. Sort of looks like an old-fashioned printer. Um, it expels uh, what looks like a ribbon of white paper and into a basket and then sucks it back in. This piece is very minimal, it's redundant in the expulsion and then the taking back in, um, yet at the same time it's highly complex. I think the exhibition asks what kind of spaces humanize and what kind of spaces dehumanize and, and why do we design spaces along those lines? What kind of institutional spaces uh, provide an ominous and dehumanizing experience and why are they designed to do that? Is it because they want to express a certain kind of authority and in some way oppress us? And it goes along with themes in the exhibition, um, control and power as they relate to knowledge and access to information, control of information in today's society. So uh, a piece in the exhibition that uh, is new and was done uh, just for SAG uh, is called Smart Cube. Uh, Smart Cube is an uh, electrochromatic uh, glass cube with a steel frame uh, on top of a plinth uh, that has um, motion distance sensors and the cube changes uh, in its physical appearance uh, when a viewer comes uh, in proximity to it. So this is a very new technology and again the idea that something transparent um, then becomes opaque is playing with levels of viewing, control of information, hiding of information. But we also did this wall mural behind. Um, the wall mural uh, introduces a subtext of opticality, of uh, visual effect, 
refers to the movement in uh, pop art, uh, which was very prevalent uh, in the 60s and related to uh, ideas of geometry and visual uh, phenomena that occur uh, when uh, geometric designs are made um, to fool the eye or to change the uh, perception that the eye can see. The cube, when you're far away from it, is transparent. When you move closer to it, it becomes opaque. When it's transparent, you can see through it and you can see the mural behind it. When it's opaque, you can't see the mural anymore. So there is a dialogue that is occurring. But that dialogue is somewhat metaphysical, uh, somewhat of a rumination philosophically uh, on aesthetics, because the two don't necessarily inherently uh, completely relate to each other, but they're uh, a thematic discussion that's going side by side. We've uh, created a certain uh, design to the exhibition in which kinetic works and electronic works are readily uh, acceptable. So you're seeing uh, quite a high degree of electronic uh, pieces in this exhibition, but you're just treating them as sculptures and the 2D works just as painting. I think the electronic interactive artwork is designed um, with the idea of encounter. So it's not about the electronics, it's not about the technology, it's about the encounter with the viewer and how the viewer interacts with the piece to actually complete the piece. So in these works you have different levels of viewing. The viewer can choose to walk past and not engage, but I think the pieces and the experience of the pieces invite the viewer to engage and that really completes the artwork.